On this channel, we've explored a lot of HDMI mods for an array of retro consoles. These mods are great because they allow us to easily enjoy these older systems on our modern televisions. Back in 2021, we explored the N64 Digital, which is a fantastic internal HDMI mod from the folks over at Pixel FX. And since its introduction, this was the only internal HDMI mod we had for the Nintendo 64. But now we have a new entry into this segment from Game Box Systems. This is the 64 HD, a budget-friendly internal HDMI mod for the Nintendo 64. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we'll be taking a look at a really cool budget-friendly Nintendo 64 HDMI mod. This is the 64 HD digital video output mod from the folks over at Gamebox Systems. It's a no-frills option that focuses on getting you quality HDMI video capability at a lower price point. To date, we've only had one option for an internal HDMI mod and that came from the company Pixel FX. While that kit is absolutely fantastic and provides a slew of great features, it comes at a pretty hefty price tag. Gamebox, on the other hand, aims to provide a value proposition for those seeking an internal digital-to-digital -digital HDMI mod, along with a solid set of basic features such as various resolutions, scaling options, and filters. It's a cheaper alternative to PixelFX's offering that positions itself as a sort of value option. Now, if you're not familiar with the Pixel FX kit, I covered it in another video, which I'll have linked in the video description below. Anyway, in this video, I'm gonna show you all the parts included in the new Gamebox 64 HD kit. Then I'll demonstrate how to install it, go over some of its major features, review the pros and cons, and of course, provide you with my overall thoughts. So the first item we have is the quick solder flex cable. This connects directly to the N64's Reality Coprocessor, or RCP, and was co-designed with Helder. As I've said in numerous other videos before, I absolutely love these quick solder flex cables as they provide a clean and professional installation. Next up is the 64HD mainboard, which holds the FPGA chip. This is the brains of the entire operation, handling all the processing required to enable HDMI video out. And here we have the daughter board, which holds the mini HDMI port, as well as the flex ribbon cable to connect it to the mainboard. Also included in the kit are both the AV shroud with a cutout for the mini HDMI port, as well as the booster bracket to support the HDMI daughter board. The shroud was licensed from Laser Bear Industries, and the bracket will actually be different from the one I have here, but it will be installed and function pretty much the same. And lastly, the kit includes two adhesive foam pads, which will help install the main board on NUS CPU 06 through 09 model N64s, since they have a different heatsink and cannot be mounted using the existing screws. Now I'll be demonstrating the install on a NUS CPU 04 revision of the console, which is an earlier model. One of the ways to find out what model you have is to open the console up and look at the silkscreen text right above the cartridge connector. Another way, which seems to work most of the time, is to look at the serial number. Consoles with a serial number that starts with NS1 tend to be an early revision console like the one I'll be using for this tutorial. Anyway, that's enough chit chat. Now let's go ahead and install this HDMI kit. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do as usual is tear down the N64 console and remove the heatsink and RF shielding so we can access the pins on the RCP chip. The N64 has a ton of screws, so you do wanna make sure to keep track of where each one goes. Fantastic! With the heatsink and RF shield removed, we now have access to the RCP, with a focus on these pins right here. So grab the quick solder flex 
And notice the silkscreen number six here. The first pin on the ribbon needs to be aligned with pin six on the RCP. Here you can see pin one and this white dot which marks every fifth pin. So we just need to solder to the pin to the right of the one marked with the white dot shown right here by the arrow. So start to align the quick solder flex with pin six on the RCP. And if you want, use some tape to help secure the quick solder flex once it's aligned, which may help you while tacking it in. So here you can see that the tape is temporarily holding the quick solder flex in place and that all the pins are nicely aligned with the RCP. Now add some flux and then begin to tack the ribbon in place. I'm using my tweezers to hold the ribbon down while I touch the pins with my iron tip. I put just a small amount of solder on the tip of my iron and I am gently touching the pins to tack them in. Once I have a few pins secured, I can then carefully remove the tape. You definitely don't wanna yank the tape off and risk ripping off a pad. So definitely take your time and be very careful. With the tape removed, go ahead and make solid connections between the RCP and our quick solder flex. Then give it a quick clean with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. And this is what it should look like when you're done. Those are some good looking solid welds. Now we need to solder the quick solder flex to this point right here. First add some flux and fresh solder. Then bend the ribbon down just a bit so that it's making contact. and there should be enough residual solder on the leg to make a solid connection as shown. Again, give it a quick clean, and this is what it should look like. Now we need to add the control wire. So tin this pad here, and then attach a thin gauge wire to it. I'm using 30 gauge Kynar wire. Then solder the other end of the wire to pin two on the PIF chip. Now, depending on what model N64 you have, this step may be a bit different. So definitely reference the game box instructions to ensure you're soldering to the correct pin. So with everything pretty much wired up, now would be a great time to test it out and make sure it's working. To test it, I connected the main board and daughter board, inserted a game and the jumper pack, and thankfully everything worked perfectly. When installing the jumper pack, make sure you're inserting it in the correct way and not backwards. That would be very bad. All right, after confirming everything is working properly, we need to remove the motherboard from the bottom shell. With the motherboard out, let's go ahead and grab our support bracket. Then place the HDMI daughter board onto it as shown, and then secure it to the bracket using the two included M2 screws. Next, drop the assembled bracket into the bottom shell of the N64. Then drop in the lower RF shield, followed by the motherboard, but before fully seating the board, install our new AV shroud over the AV port and it should look a little something like this. And now go ahead and begin to reassemble the console.
Okay, so the 64HD mainboard will actually be installed here on the heatsink. So we'll need to go ahead and remove these three screws. Then drop in the mainboard and secure it in place with the screws we just removed. Now take care to not over tighten them since they are secured with a few threads due to the thickness of the PCB. You definitely don't want to strip those threads by over tightening these screws. Now we can connect the quick solder flex to the main board. Once that's secured, grab the included ribbon cable and connect that to the main board as well. You'll want to install it with the blue tab facing up. Then connect the other end of the ribbon to the HDMI daughter board, again with the blue tab facing up. And this is what the 64HD should look like with everything all hooked up. Now all that's left to do is to put the top shell on and button it all up. Don't forget to also install the jumper pack. And there you have it, the 64 HD kit installed and ready to go. I think it's fantastic that we now have another option when it comes to an internal digital to digital HDMI mod for the Nintendo 64. Not only that, the 64 HD comes in at an attractive price point, providing a budget option for those that may not want to shell out a lot of money for a pixel effects kit. Don't get me wrong though, both kits are fantastic, but they occupy different segments of the market. The Pixel FX N64 Digital Kit is in a sense the Mercedes, while the Gamebox 64 HD is the Volkswagen. Both kits are well-engineered devices, but they both offer different value propositions. While you may not get all the bells and whistles that the N64 Digital has, the 64 HD offers a very compelling feature set to price ratio. So with that, let's take a look at the features that the Gamebox 64 HD has to offer. Now, one thing to note is that my particular 64 HD unit has a candidate release version of the firmware. So some things like the names of the settings may change in the final production version. Anyway, the first thing I wanna talk about, which is very similar to the N64 Digital, is that the 64 HD sports a no-cut AV shroud, which is great news since we don't have to modify the original shell. And like I mentioned previously, it uses the same shroud used on the Pixel FX kit, which was designed by LaserBear Industries. Gamebox was able to license the design from LaserBear. I mean, why fix what isn't broken? Now, all the remaining features can be found through the OSD menu, which is accessed by pressing down on the D-pad, the down C button, and the L and R trigger all at the same time for a couple seconds. With the menu open, we are presented with a few options. The first and arguably the most important are the various resolutions that the kit can output. Here you can see them all on screen with the exception of 1080i, which my capture card was not able to handle. 480p appears to be slightly stretched horizontally, while 720p represents an integer scaled image, which is what I personally will be using. Now one of the issues with 720p being integer scaled is that it is windowed quite a bit. This brings me to the next option, which is scaling. Here we have three options, the first of which is proper. This is the default setting which provides a perfectly integer scaled image. But like I mentioned previously, although it provides a sharp image, it is windowed quite a bit. The next option is stretch, which obviously stretches the image to fit nearly the entire screen. With this, you lose the integer scaling, but it does fill the whole screen, and I'm sure there are some folks that will like this option. And the last option is called TV. This is a non-integer linear scale of roughly 1.5 times. This is the setting that I'll most likely be using, and it fills the entire height of the screen and retains the proper aspect ratio. So overall, a pretty solid assortment of resolutions and scaling options. Now the next set of options can be found under the picture configuration. Here we have several more settings to further customize the video output. The first item you can adjust is filter. You can see them all here on screen. There's enhanced, smooth, and sharp. I prefer not having any turned on, but I know some may like having the smoothing effect that these filters can provide. One thing to note is that some of these filter settings really darken the image, so to fix that you can brighten the image using the filter brightness setting. I've actually adjusted the filters you're seeing on screen so that they all are roughly the same brightness. 
The next option is deblur. Here you can see it both turned on and off. Enabling deblur makes the pixels look just a bit sharper. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the softer image that the native blurring effect provides, so I keep the deblur option enabled at all times. And the last picture configuration option to go over are scan lines. Again, if you know me, I'm not really a huge fan of artificial scan lines, so this option isn't too big of a deal for me, but here you can see all three modes on screen. And once you've gone through the OSC menu and dialed in the settings you want, you can save them by going to the main page and selecting Save Settings so that they will remain in place after powering off the console. Now the last item I'd like to discuss is the 240p mode that I mentioned earlier. This mode is actually meant to be used with a CRT monitor by utilizing this HDMI to component adapter. When connected to a CRT using the adapter, you get a really great image that's perfectly scaled for the CRT. It's a great option to get a clean 240p signal to a CRT that can accept it. Now I did run into an issue when first connecting the component cables to my CRT. As you can see, the image is scrambled. I was told by Gamebox Systems that this was a syncing issue, but can be remedied simply by switching resolutions to 480p and then back to 240p. Anyway, while this isn't a feature I will personally use, it's neat that Gamebox added it for those that want to use a CRT vice a flat panel HD television. Please note that if you want to utilize this mode, this particular converter box is the only known compatible unit. I'll have a link to it in the video description if you're planning on using this setup with a CRT. All right, so those are the primary features of this kit, but now let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I think it's great first and foremost that this is a no-cut mod. That means that you can install it in your favorite limited edition N64 without fear of damaging the shell. Additionally, I think given its price, it has a pretty decent set of features, which brings me to the biggest pro, and that is price. On paper, this kit cannot really be compared to the Pixel Effects kit, but when you factor in its competitive pricing, its value proposition becomes clearer. It of course has fewer advanced features, but honestly I think those who are primarily interested in getting a good video output, and not necessarily all the bells and whistles, will be completely satisfied with this kit. Anyway, those are the pros. But now, let's get into the cons. For me, the cons really stem from the limited features, but honestly when you put it into perspective with price, that sort of becomes a non-issue. When compared to the Pixel FX kit, yes, there are fewer settings that can be adjusted, but honestly, that's okay. For someone like me who is primarily concerned with getting a solid digital image to an HD television by simply connecting it with an HDMI cable, this kit fits the bill. But if you're someone who does want all the bells and whistles, like more resolution and scaling options, as well as filters and more, then you may want to opt for the Pixel FX kit. Also, when it comes to resolutions such as 1080i, depending on how your display de-interlaces the video signal, you may not be able to get an image, or the image may appear to be jittery. Additionally, the 240p mode is meant to be used with a HDMI to component adapter to output onto a CRT television, so that feature may not be of any use to you if you do not intend to use this primarily on a CRT. Now, while these are limitations, I don't necessarily think they are huge issues. It all really depends on what your budget is and what features are important to you. I think for the price, this presents an interesting and attractive offering for those that want a no-frills way of getting a solid HD video output to their modern television. Anyway, now let's finally talk about price. So for those of you who are interested in picking one of these up, Gamebox is actually no longer handling fulfillment, and these can be purchased from several online retailers. Castlemania Games, Stone Age Gamer, and Zed Labs in the UK will all be carrying the 64 HD. Right now, these kits are available for pre-order at $120, which is a limited time offer that will only last this week through the 23rd, which is about 10 bucks off what these will eventually retail for. So if you want to save some cash, definitely try to pre-order this week. Also, you can save an additional 10% with my coupon code TITO at Castlemania Games. So at the end of the day, you gotta ask yourself, what's important to you? A decent set of features with nice looking high def video at a great price, or a lot of features at a more premium price. Now unfortunately I didn't have time in this video, but if you'd like to see a head to head comparison of the Pixel FX N64 Digital stacked up against the 64 HD, let me know down below in the comments. And if you like these HDMI mods, I got a whole playlist dedicated to them, covering a bunch of different retro consoles which you can check out right here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next Thursday.